Is it possible to make Warhammer level plastic at home? I don't know, but Nick is gonna find out. I, I thought we were gonna work on it together. And he's gonna do it in a week. I mean, I'm not a machinist. I, I, why does it have to be a challenge? We were inspired watching Emil from Squidmar tour a plastic injection factory with tons of beautiful big machines and equipment. But can it be done at home? I don't know, go, uh, go uh, figure it out. It's okay, I mean, it's gonna take a long time. I, I don't know. Okay, goodbye. The two machines they showed in the video were a CNC mill and a plastic injection machine. To get the machines used in the video, it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Which makes me wonder if there's consumer level equipment that can make high quality parts. I guess Jay just assumes because I have some experience with the CNC machine, I'll be able to figure it out. About seven years ago, when I was in college, I got to use a large CNC machine and even cut out stencils for the Milwaukee Repertory Theater. But otherwise, I haven't touched a CNC machine in years. When McCara reached out about their new machine, the Carvera Air, I knew we had to give it a try and see if this machine was up to the task. It has the ability to basically do any small to medium sized machining task you could want it to do. Firstly, it is a CNC mill. It has a spindle that spins at max 13,000 RPM and can cut a wide variety of materials like wood, plastic, PCB boards, epoxy resin, and aluminum, which is why I was really interested. Aluminum is a soft metal, but is difficult to mill on small consumer grade CNC machines. The reason Makara touts at being able to cut aluminum is because of the steel frame, giving it the rigidity to handle the metal. We'll be seeing if this is the case. Other add-ons are a laser module for laser engraving, and a fourth axis module for cutting complex 3D shapes like busts or statues. I briefly tried out these aspects and will be utilizing them in the future, but for today, we're just gonna be focusing on using the CNC mill. The spindle has a quick change in collet that allows you to easily switch bits, and you can get different size collets to support bigger bits. Makera supplied us with a bunch of different bits, but you can go online and order specific sizes and specialty bits depending on your project. The bed has an interesting way of holding down material by giving screw holes everywhere and using these clips to hold the project in place. I'm used to having to screw down material down to a sacrificial board, but depending on the project, I don't have to. The last important part is the probe. We love a good probe. This attachment lives next to the spindle and goes in the quick change collet just like the bits. The probe sets the height of the material and shows you an outline of where the machine is going to cut. That is super helpful to make sure you're not cutting into something you didn't mean to or programmed your cutting in the wrong place. Although you can facilitate a lot of projects with this machine, it is relatively simple to operate, and to do so, there are two software packages. First is Makara Cam, which will help you create all the tool paths for your project. First, you set up your material, then you can import your own 2D or 3D files into Makara Cam, or there are primitive tools in the software to play with. The coolest feature, especially when getting started, is the tool library. Makara has already put all their bits and the correct speeds depending on the material you choose. The only thing you need to think about is the best bit for your project and what type of tool path you want to create. Makara allows for many different types of tool paths for drilling, threading, cutting out material, and relief cuts, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. They have very good tutorials to explain what every toolpath does. Anyways, a relief toolpath allows you to import an STL and have the machine remove the material, leaving only what you imported remaining. This is what we're gonna be using to test out the machine. If you're already familiar with CNC milling, you can use software like VCarve or Fusion 360 to create your toolpaths. I cut five identical pieces of wood and made a really simple file to test what I believe to be the hardest shape to create, a perfectly smooth sphere. This brings us to the second piece of software, which is Carvera Controller. This is how you send your files to the machine, set up your tool paths you created in Makaracam or other software to be cut, and a manual control if you need it. I have it set up on Wi-Fi, so all I have to do is connect to the machine, upload my file, double check my cutting area, my probe settings, and the machine takes it from there. It'll prompt you for bit changes, and the Carvera Air has LED indicators that will let you know what bit you need to be putting in. If the Carvera Air sounds interesting to you, check it out in the description below. And use our code to get $100 off your order. I ran five tests, Let's see what Jay thinks about them. All right, this is what I've been working on Ooh. for the past few days. Yeah, give me some wood. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, each one, I adjusted the settings. Why is one and five so different? Yeah, the, the big changes between the two is I changed the step down rate, which is how far it goes down by each pass. And then I changed the step rate uh, of the bit when it moves over. So this one was, I think, probably a millimeter it moved over so that's why there's a lot more lines in it where this one i think i did 0 0.01 millimeter which is why it's so much smoother because it just it just ever so slightly moved over man that is smooth do you think it would be possible this is a space marine backpack this is the original space marine backpack and this is the modern space marine backpack you think it could do something like that I'm hoping. <laughs> I have no idea if it can, but uh, 
I think it should be able to. I have all the, the really small bits, so I should be able to get it to be smooth, but I don't know. <laughs> We're going to find out. <laughs> all right. The Carveria error is the most important part of this project, as the mold will be determining how good our cast will be. But let's take a look at how we're going to be doing the plastic injection molding. The LNS Technologies 300A plastic injection machine is one of the smaller machines you can find. You can inject two cubic inches of material, and it's all pneumatic, which also means you're going to need an air compressor. It's a very simple machine. It heats up the pellets from the hopper, then you place a warmed up mold underneath it and pull the lever down to inject the plastic. It comes with a test mold and a very detailed guide on how to use it. The most important part is this diagram on mold construction. I can use that and the measurements I take from the sample mold in order to model something effective. Jumping back to the Squidmar video, he did mention the sizes of bits Archon Studio uses for the molds. 6mm, 3mm, 1.5, 1, 1.75, 0.5, 0.3mm. I can go on bits and bits and get those as metric ball nose end mills, which should leave us with a smoother finish. I need to keep in mind that the 0.3mm is the smallest our details can be for modeling. In the video, they also created steel molds, which are much stronger, can be used without degrading longer, and capture better detail. Steel is a difficult material to mill, and I'm not sure I'm ready to give that a go yet. Today I'm going to be using Vectorworks as I'm the most familiar with the software, but you could use Blender or any other 3D modeling software to make your part. I first started with a picture of the retro backpack and I scaled it to the height of the new Space Marine backpack. Then I just traced and extruded shapes until I was getting something backpack shaped. I had to do a little making up of details since the retro backpack is really soft. I made a few iterations playing with different shapes and found extra inspiration to help me get things right. Once I had it all blocked in, I beveled the edges. It looks like the edges on the Games Workshop backpack are slightly rounded. I bet that will help when I remove the part from the mold. Now before cutting, I want to double check what I have so far will work as intended. I took my backpack model and cut it out of a solid which will represent the aluminum stock. Then I can import it and do a test toolpath to see what it's going to look like. I decided to switch from Makericam to Vcarve because there's a few more toolpath tools in that software that I want to take advantage of. I selected the finishing pass and my smallest bit, the 0.3mm, to see what it would look like. Everything was looking really good, except the vents being flat won't form properly. It looks like it's missing the fins. I went back to Vectorworks to fix the vents by simplifying them and angling them. While there, I can add the gate and sprue connection point to the backpack. The last few things I need are locator pins and air vents. I cut all that out of two rectangular solids that are representing the aluminum stock. And that is the top and bottom of the mold. The only problem is my mold is 100 by 50 millimeters, and I only have 100 by 100 aluminum bar. I also don't have a saw that can accurately cut aluminum, so I'm going to need to use the Carvera Air to cut it in half. In V-Carve, it is super easy to draw a line at 50 millimeters and use the profile toolpath to cut right through it. The only thing I need to be sure of is putting a sacrificial board under the aluminum, and I cut a half inch piece of wood that the bit will cut in first and then start cutting the aluminum. This is so I don't cut the L bracket on the bed of the machine. This was my first time cutting aluminum on this machine, and it went perfectly. After about 24 minutes, I was left with the perfect edge at 50 millimeters. I ran it again on the next part of my mold, and it also turned out. Comparing them, there was a slight slant to the edge that was cut, but I don't think I cut my sacrificial board to half an inch perfectly. It shouldn't matter anyways. Now that I have my stock the right size, I can start making the tool paths. Before I started, I'm going to be putting in all the bits I'm going to be using, and I renumbered them so I know which tool I need for which step. Since five of the bits I'm going to be using out of the six aren't Makara, I have to add them to V-Carve. I'm going to be making six tool paths that correspond with the six bits. I'm starting with a 3.175 millimeter end mill that will be my rough cut. Then I'm using a 1.5, 1, 1 0.7, 0.5, and 0.3 ball nose bit as the finishing pass. That'll also help me add the extra detail. Stepping down the bits like this will save time and produce less wear on the bits. I calculated my tool paths, saved them, and sent them to the Cavera Air to start cutting. I am very nervous it's not going to turn out, or I set up my file wrong, but I just need to start cutting bit by bit. First I lock down my piece of aluminum, then I need to put in the probe to see if it's showing the correct cutting area. It looks good so far. I can switch to the first 3.175 end mill. This ran for about 40 minutes, cutting out the rough shape of the backpack, gate, and my locator holes. After it finished, it does look like it didn't cut the locator holes all the way through, but I think that's because I need to do it with a different tool path. I think it should be fine as long as I can put a pin in both sides of the mold. Next is the 1.5mm finishing toolpath. This takes off the second most amount of material and starts to really put in the detailing. This finished in another 40 minutes and it was time to put in the 1mm bit for the next finishing step. I started the machine back up again, the spindle went down, and the bit broke. There was something wrong with the spindle. I slammed my hand down on the stop button and went back to VCarve to see what was wrong. I'm assuming that starting at the 1mm bit, my step down was too aggressive and trying to take off too much material. For these metric ball nose bits that I'm doing the finishing steps on, I kind of made up the numbers. I bought them separately so I don't have a profile from Makara. I couldn't find much about them online. I uploaded the updated toolpaths, started it back up, and 
the bit broke again. Now I'm confused, and I guess it's still too aggressive. So I switched to the 0.7mm bit because I don't have any more 1mm bits. I slowed everything down again, recalculated it, and ran it. And again, it broke right away. I took the next two hours looking up everything I could about why this could be happening. I only have 1.7mm bit left, and I'm afraid that if this last one snaps, the other ones will too. It seems like the spindle is going down and not spinning. I have a few ideas, but I need to set up a new file to test this on. I started setting it up and making a new toolpath, and... I forgot to add a zero to the RPM speed. It was going 1200 instead of going 12,000. It wasn't spinning fast enough, so it broke. I quickly updated the top molds tool pass with the correct speeds and gave my last 0.7 millimeter bit a try. And it worked. That's what it was. If you're going to add your own custom bits, you need to make sure you get the RPM correct. Hard to imagine. After the 0.7 millimeter bit was done, I switched to the 0.5 millimeter bit. More and more of the backpack started to become visible with each pass. It was exciting to see what I designed. I then switched to the 0.3 millimeter bit. This rounded up my cutting time to be about five hours for everything. I think it looks great. There's definitely some tooling marks and I'm not sure if that will show up casted or not. It also cut a little around the backpack because I didn't mask off my cutting area very well for the finishing passes in V-Carve. It is very subtle, so I'm not sure if that will matter either. It's time to get the bottom mold made. To do that, I used the exact same steps in V-Carve. And double checking, I had my RPM set right. The only thing I did differently was add a separate roughing tool path for the air vents. I ran this just like the other one, and also in about five hours, I had this one too. Comparing the two, they look the same. They don't look perfectly smooth, but I don't know if that'll matter. It's really weird to see the design that I've been staring at finally be cut out. I next need to figure out what I'm gonna be doing about these locator pins. I think the easiest thing would be to 3D print them. I made a few different sizes since the printer always shrinks the model a little bit. I got two locators that lock in just right. My only worry is that the mold will get hot and start melting the plastic pins. I'm gonna add some tape to hopefully keep it together. So close to seeing what this is gonna look like. I started the injection machine and heated up for about 20 minutes. I also hooked up the air compressor and set the pressure to 80 PSI. I bought polystyrene pallets to try out for this project. That's also the type of plastic that Games Workshop uses. I found that these pallets take a long time to heat up and you have to run the machine a lot hotter. According to the instructions, if using polystyrene with an aluminum mold, you may want to use a mold release so the plastic won't damage the mold. I so happen to have a mold release. I'm not sure if this is the right one, but we're gonna give it a go. I heated up my mold, put it in place, and injected it. My heart was racing. Did the plastic make it through? Are all the details present? Will I get it out of the mold? After a little bit of prying, yes. And it looks like it was a success. It seems like this piece maybe didn't get enough plastic, but I can keep trying. I tried it about 10 more times, and it seems like I didn't hold the nozzle down long enough. Each piece came out looking really good and fully formed. Let's see what Jay thinks. I got some presents for you. <laughs> so first, mm -hmm. I'll show you the mold. Whoa, dang. <laughs> that looks real. Man. But yeah, this is the first thing I cut out of aluminum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm really happy with it. Holy cow. And then you shot plastic yeah, into I this? Thought that's what's in this box. <laughs> oh my okay. God. So I'll show you my, my first one. Mm -hmm. This is the first one that I did. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Holy cow. This is the first yeah, one? Yeah, this is the first one. Did it get better? So. <laughs> this looks notice, pretty good. Yeah. If you notice, if you flip it over to the back, it's like missing material mm -hmm. or something. So I thought just that my design was bad, but I wanted to try it again. So this is this is another one. Yeah, so it's just completely perfect. Yeah. And if you don't like that one, I have another one here. Man. If you don't like that one, I have another <laughs> one here. <laughs> then I did, I did go ahead and I just painted one just because the, the plastic's kind of hard to see mm -hmm. the material. And if you don't like those ones, <laughs> I do have, <laughs> I do have more. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. The only, the only things that I see, I got a little bit of mold slippage because if you can imagine, these plastic pegs are not perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the smallest details of the vents aren't exactly perfect. And the only the reason why that is, it, it isn't the the milling at all. It's the design because I, I just made it way too thin. So I, I could fix it in the design and make the, the vents a little bit bigger. And then that would allow mm -hmm. the plastic to get in there. Or I could go with a smaller bit and then that could maybe get in there and cut it. Barely, barely see the tooling. In some spots, it's there's nothing. nothing. Right. So do you think this is worthy of <clears throat> trying to paint it up? Oh, I can paint this up. 
Go do it. Go, go. <laughs> Genuine polystyrene bits. Homemade bits. Oh, this is rad. One of my space marines is getting an upgrade. Plastic glue makes for a very strong bond and only works with plastic to plastic connections. Case in point, I had to use some tools to pry off the old plastic backpack. Won't be needing that anymore. Nick's little bit is glorious. I nipped off the sprue and grabbed a sanding twig and got to work. Just like a normal plastic bit, I did a little bit of cleanup with the sanding twig to get rid of any mold slippage and a little bit of knife work for some mold lines. And it was ready for my Templar accoutrement. I grabbed a Games Workshop sprue, Citadel skulls, and nipped off two heads. And because these are plastic too, I can use plastic glue to stick them down. This will melt the two surfaces together, giving me maximum security. I invented a paint handle with a little bit of double stick tape and popsicle sticks, so I had an easier time holding down the little bit. Then I carefully drilled some tiny holes into the skulls and inserted sewing straight pins for the scale nails. A little bit of super glue and this backpack is ready for paint. And after a coat of primer, it seemed exactly like a Games Workshop bit. After a white zenny, it's ready for a dunking in my Templar soup. This is a mix of Black Templar, Leviathan Blue, and Lamian Medium, and it is what I use on all my Black Templars. After two thin coats of this, it darkened in the cracks and left the large surfaces a dusty blue-gray, which I finished off with a quick sponging of silver for paint chips. Now the only thing left are the Skulls, the deceased Battle Brothers who previously wore this suit of armor. One of them was Battle Brother Nick, and the other, Brother Sean. With the little silver paint on the nails, it was ready to be glued to his back, of course, using plastic glue. You would never know. Ah, it felt just like a real plastic bit, because it is a real plastic bit. Ah, an injection molded plastic something. That is so wickedly cool. I would say that's pretty wizard. It's so close to being like perfect. And honestly, comparing it to Games Workshop's first try, the old Rogue Trader Space Marine sprue, is kind of better. This is some pretty wild technology that we're working with here. Jay did a fantastic job painting up the backpack and bringing it to life. Of course, something like this could just be 3D printed, but there are so many benefits when working with polystyrene plastic. The process of mold making is one I'd really like to get good at, and I'm glad that the Mehira Carvera error was up to the task for my first attempt. If you're interested in the machine, follow the link in the description and use our code to get $100 off your order. What do you think I should make next? Leave it in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.